how South Sudan's dream of peace and independence is spiraling into more violence and desperation. Yeah, well, my name is Moni Mbethi Atta. I've never been to South Sudan before, up to my deportation. South Sudan's civil war. Ethnic-based violence. 400,000 died, 4 million were displaced. I have my mom's brother, but he's, he's deceased now, so it's a day by day here, you know what I mean? No one is here to save you, you know what I mean? You gotta be, get up and be your own hero, bro. Work hard. If you don't work, you don't eat, you know what I mean? Bro, I like catch malaria, almost died, you know what I mean? Especially, malaria kills over here, bro. I don't want my daughters to travel over here. That's one thing I don't, I don't ever want. Yo, it's your boy Dave here and this is The Felon Show. Hope all is going well out there. God bless you all. How about you introduce yourself, my brother, and where you're from? Yeah, well, my name is Moni Mbethi Atta. I'm from South Sudan, by background. And I was once living in Australia. Dave here is one of my close mates in Atta. Yeah, that's right. I've been in Australia since I arrived in the past. So how long you been in Australia? Uh, like, how long you been over there for? So... My arrival in Australia, it was November 11, 2004, and I was in prison, uh, say, the year 2012 up to 2018, so that's when I got deported, so. So how long have you been back over there, brother? How long have you oh, been? Yeah. Four years. Four years, up to five years now. So I was deported 2018. But you, you went back to Sudan, isn't it? South Sudan, South Sudan. Because apparently, because you know how it is, they got their independence from the north, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Sudan. sorry, bro. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that, bro. Yeah, South yeah. Sudan. Yeah. So this is my close brother here. This is my close brother and friend, my old waxer. <laughs> this is the brother Moni yeah, here. Pity. <laughs> yeah, this the is the... <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the brother yeah, 50 Monday. here. Um, man, it's good to see this um, this guy here, man. He's a dear friend. Um, man, my heart breaks for this guy, man, you know, and seeing all the other brothers, um, all my other South um, Sudanese brothers, you know, from Melbourne. Um, you know, it's it's tough seeing my brothers over there. But um, so this fella here is a 501 as well. And this, this man right here is a bloke that I got a lot of respect for. Um, and not just me, a lot of brothers got respect for this guy here. Um, like I said, so this dude is also a fellow 501, but this guy got deported back to South Sudan. So, I mean, for people that don't know about what it's like over there, I mean, um, it's, it's pretty rough over there. You know, I mean, you got to watch out for a lot of stuff over there. You know, you got to watch out for catching diseases. I mean, you got to watch out for everything over there. I mean, money is scarce over there. Um, so, I mean, bro, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show, bro. It's a pleasure, it's a pleasure. So, so, you're, you're, so you're from South Sudan originally. Obviously, you and your family escaped at, at some point and, um, and went to Australia for a much better life than what's over there. Um, I mean, bro, to start off with, how are the conditions in South Sudan at the moment? Well, to begin with, i never been to South Sudan before up to my deportation, you know, because I was born in the north, you know. Yeah, so that was my first time being in South Sudan. So you got deported back to a country to you didn't even know. Yeah, I never set foot on before, you know what I mean? So So how was it how was it for you coming back yes. there? I mean you know what we gotta do. Like I'm a man, you know what I mean? I just gotta cop, you know what I mean? Whatever condition they're throwing at me, I'm sure I'm gonna make the best of it, you know what I'm saying? You just got to continue living life, bro. I mean, I know you're a soldier, brother. You know what I mean? And, you know, you got to you gotta make the best of, of what you got. But, I mean, bro, I'll be honest. Even me yeah, getting so... even me getting back, getting deported back to New Zealand, man, I was doing it pretty rough just coming back here, cuz. You know what I mean? So, I can only imagine, bro. <laughs> yeah, <what> yeah. <laughs> bro, New Zealand, New Zealand, it's like heaven to me at this very hour, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, nah, bro. Uh, 
So, but so, yeah, the conditions are not the conditions are not that good. You know, what I mean, environmental, environmentally, bro, it's not good. Yes, you know what I mean. But what can we do? It's a country. Like what? What? So, how? How was it for you coming back there, man? Like just the like coming back from Australia. You know what I mean? I mean, all, all you knew was Australia, really. So, how 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 is it, man? Coming back there for you, coming back from Australia. Well. To begin with, I was angry, you know what I mean? So, straight up from prison to detention, a couple of days in detention, and then straight back to Sudan. So, I was just angry, so I didn't have much to think about. So, But did you have family over there? Or? Yeah, well, I thought I had family, but I don't, you know what I mean? So what, yeah, so I had my uncle, my mom's brother. I had my mom's brother. He was, but he's he's deceased now, so I saw the rest of his. That's the only person that I love the most, you know what I mean, in this whole wide world. And I had my mother, my sister, but my sister she's married at the moment and mom is in Uganda, you know what I'm saying? The old lady. She's in Uganda with her. Yeah. So so what, what like what what what's the go when you come off the plane and that cuz? Bro, so when I came off the plane, so the AFP or what do you, uh, Australian Border Force, ABF, and the intelligence services, because I was escorted, you know what I mean? About four guys, I think. They're all wearing like normal uniforms. Yeah. They're from Australian Intelligence, I think. From all I know. Yeah, so when I got there, pretty much just reached South Sudan and they're like, yep, the stop is here. I'm like, oh, okay, I know. Just got off the plane, took my belongings, went down the hall, and I found one of my cousins, you know what I mean? So, and they also got me in a hotel. Begin with, they got me a hotel for like seven days, seven days in hotel, just to get you a little bit, you know what I mean, like comfortable. Yep. Yeah, but in terms, yeah, no fun though. In terms of fun, none, got nothing. So basically, you're here now in your country, you live your life, bro. So you get no support over so, there, yeah. huh? I done my seven days. Nah, I had no support over. That. So just do my own things, you know. Like sometimes I just go work, hustle hard. It's a day by day here, you know what I mean? You gotta like work hard in order to survive, you know what I'm saying? Because if you don't, no one else is gonna fall. No one is gonna no one is here no one is here to save you, you know what I mean? You gotta be get up and be your own hero, bro. Yeah, that's that's the fact of the matter, is, bro. Fifty, uh, so. brother Money, man. I got so much respect for you, man. I mean, bro, just hearing that just makes me so grateful. I came back to New Zealand, cause you know what I mean, like. So yeah. how how was it after that seven days, yeah, bro? Yeah. Well, after that seven days, I had to take off to go and visit mom and you, uh, my own. My old lady in Uganda, you know what I mean? So Uganda was a little bit all right. Conditions are all a like, developed country, you know what I'm saying? Unlike South Sudan. It's just recently got this independence. Still like crawling. Yeah, so I went there, spent a little bit of time with the old lady. Then made my way back to South Sudan. So when I made my way back, I was sure then I'm ready. I was ready just to go back to South Sudan and start start living, like find a place, rent a place, find a job, and yeah, struggle just like everybody else. Struggle. Like, can you paint a picture, bro, of like, because obviously people in Australia and that, they don't really know, you know what I mean? Like, can you paint a picture of what everyday life is actually like there, bro, like? Bro, it's a struggle. What I'm telling you is, 
like basically, let's say in order just for you, like you work every day, basically. You do a lot of hard work, you know what I mean? The work that I do here, if I was in Australia, you'd be getting a lot of money for that. Right. In here, you probably get like a dollar a day or something, under a dollar, you know what I'm saying? Because the dollar, the dollar value is up high, you know what I mean? It's that much high. It's not, it's not fun. So, you work just to survive that day. You got no, you got no any, like, you got no saving or something. You can't save money as well. Unless you're up there with the big guys, I um, mean, the officials, you know what it is. Yeah. But if you're just a, a normal citizen, you'll be struggling every day, day to day. It's a day to day basis, you know what I mean? Work hard. If you don't work, you don't eat, you know what I mean? Yeah. Is it dangerous over there, cuz? So. In terms of danger, yes and no. It depends. Now, I mean, what do you do? It's dangerous in some areas, and it's not dangerous in some other areas. Uh, so you you got you can't even get a bank account there enough or not? Bro, I try to get a bank. You need you need to be. A, Register business owner or something like that. You got in order in order card. You need to be a business owner. Business man. You need to get a you need to you need to pretty much be a businessman just to get a bank account. Yeah, I tried that. It didn't work. All right, man. So, well, can you talk a little bit about um your time in Australia, bro, and how you first went over there? Oh well. November November 11, 2004. That's the first time I arrived in Australia. You know what I mean, first so you, time to travel on a plane too. You know, yeah. So how how was that, man? Yeah, well, it was kind of like it's good. You know what I mean? I liked it. You know, looks like heaven to me. You know what I mean, coming from that world of country. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. Yeah, so Australia was beautiful. I mean, they were welcoming. They're good people. I mean, yeah. But as the years gone by, find myself in trouble, and I got myself in prison. So I went to blame. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We all make mistakes, bro. You know what I mean? I mean, me and you both know about making mistakes, you know? Well, I mean, yeah, man, oh. but you know, like getting sent back to, you know what I mean? A war-torn country, you know what I mean? Like, that's not right, man. You know, like just, you know, no support, man. You know, you're coming off into a place you don't know. I mean, you hadn't even been to South Sudan, had you? Yeah, I never been there before. That was my first time. So what was the process, man, like when you got out of jail? When I got out of jail, well, pretty much just sign up here, sign up here. You have your medical clearance, you get you deported. Plus, I was institutionalized, you know what I'm saying? I do daughters back in Australia as well, and their mother. I didn't think properly, so I just signed up. So you signed the papers to come back straight away? I've signed up, yeah. I didn't have time to. I've already done enough time in prison. I don't want to keep keep us on detention. Up to this day, there's still boys in detention that left there. You know what I mean? So imagine. I would have still been in detention too. Looking back since you've been there since 2018, like... What what would you rather be there or back in the detention centre? Oh yeah, <clears throat> like be where right where I'm at right now, or back in detention. Yeah, I rather uh, yeah. Well, I rather be in detention to be honest. That way, my daughters and their mothers can come and visit. You know what I'm saying? Because you got kids in Australia no, as well. It's nothing. Yeah, uh, my eldest one, her name is Mary. 
the youngest, her name is Hannah. So have you seen them? Have you seen them at all since you've been back? Yeah, I speak to my daughters every now and then, you know. But have you seen um, them? Face life? No, yeah. face to face, no. Just virtually. You no. Know? Because it's it, like, can can you even travel there, bro? Like, can people travel to South Sudan at the moment, or? Yeah, people can travel if they want to. I don't think. I don't want my daughters to travel over here. That's one thing I don't ever want. They're saying a lot, bro. You know, like if you'd rather be in detention than over there, you know what I mean, bro. Like, that's that's saying a lot, mate. Yeah, my. Just for the girls, you know what I mean? Just for my girls. Brother, so you ended up signing up. So you, you signed your papers after you got to jail, got out of jail to come back. But obviously, that's a decision that you regret, you know. Obviously, you had done your time. You, you didn't want to wait around in the detention. Right, if, I, if I never had... I didn't want to wait around in detention. Plus, I was... There's too much going through my head, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's yeah, for sure. Just, you know what I'm yeah, yeah no, nah, that's understand. Yeah. That's understandable, bro. I mean, I was the same after I did my time. I just wanted to come straight back. You know what I mean? So I understand the the mindset. You know what I mean? You you get out of jail, you you, you you've done your time. You know, so it's it's depressing when you're sitting in that detention center. But sometimes we can make rash choices as well. Yeah, that's, yeah, and that's exactly what I did. You know. Like, what was your picture of South Sudan going back there? Like, was it better than what you thought or worse? To be honest, I never had a picture, you know what I'm saying? Because I know just Africa, undeveloped countries, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Third world country. You can see the image on you. Yeah, it's, it's almost impossible to imagine, bro, what it's like over there. I mean... I've seen documentaries and stuff, bro, you know, about what's going on in South Sudan at the moment. And I mean, um oh. man. Like what how how has how's the last four years been, bro? Oh uh, the last four years it's been rough years, you know what I mean? Physically, mentally, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Have you gotten rough sick or anything? Like... Have you gotten sick or stuff like that since you've been back or? Yeah. No, I, I get sick every now and then. You know, I mean, malaria, typhoid. Ah, damn. Yeah, a lot of sickness. You know. What's what's the like catching those? Bro? I get malaria, bro. I like catch malaria. I almost died. You know what I mean? Especially malaria kills over here, bro. So you almost died. Yeah, every time, basically, every time I catch malaria. It gets me real bad, you know what I mean? I don't yeah. know why that is, yeah. How do people catch it, bro? Oh, yeah. It's just, it's everywhere, right? Oh. Mosquito, yeah. Oh. Yeah. You get bitten yeah. by a mosquito, so. Yeah. 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 Well, like I said, man, you know, like this, so, yeah. this, like I said, you know, this guy right here, um, obviously, you know, we're close mates, you know, we, um, we were locked up together in Australia. Um, but I mean, people change, you know what I mean? Like I, I'm living proof of that. The brothers living proof of that, you know, like people change after a while, you know, and, um, just seeing the brother here, just going through what he's going through is, is heartbreaking stuff. Like, you know, to anyone watching, you know, that do know any sort of, um, organizations, um, that deal with people from South Sudan or anything like that. Um, I'll definitely be leaving links in the description where you can um, message the brother here because, um, you know, it's rough conditions over there, man. All right. So that was my interview with the brother Moni. Um, like I said, you know, that, that he's a, a very close friend of mine. And um, it was good to have him on the show, obviously, because of the location that he's in on the moment. The connection's not the best. The audio's not the best. So we got to do what we can do. But I'll, I'll leave all the links. I'll leave his links in the description. If you want to get a hold of the brother or if you know anyone 
any organizations that can help the brother out over there obviously it's a bit hard you know it's a bit hard sharing and um you know showing the realities of what's going on over there it's 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 tough you know but you can bet your bottom dollar that they're struggling over there so if you know anyone that can help the brother out i know that he'd appreciate it but anyway thanks for tuning in this is the Fallon show god bless